Welcome, welcome, welcome. Yes, yes, yes. This is Disrupt Your Brand, where I interview people who are making a difference in people's lives. And today I am honored, like truly blessed and honored, Ken Kingan, who is, I call him the number one relationship coach in the world. He has been featured on Fox, Lifetime, HSN, Newsweek, even the relationship coach on Caught in the Act on MTV. And how you got on that, I would love to hear. 20 years of relationship coaching, and you've got 1.2 million followers. And today, I want to discuss with you, uh, discuss with you the power of communication. And when we were on the phone the other day, I shared with you my upbringing. I was in a very toxic environment growing up, um, two alcoholic parents. You know, I had a mother who told me I'd never amount to anything, and a father who believed in me. But every time I would go to him, he was an entrepreneur. He would say, not now, later, not now, later. Mm. I go visit him. He was on the golf course drinking beer. And I was wondering why every time I pass by a golf course, I get so angry, you know. And he just had a horrible time communicating. And my stepmother ended up divorcing him because of communication. And I told him, I said, I would never marry you because of your poor communication skills. Oh, wow. It was his way or the highway. And, you know, what happened to me growing up was a breeding ground for 35 years of me not using my voice and actually poor communication. And I want to start by asking you why you think that now more than ever, people are not communicating. You know, they're they're listening to speak, but not really listening you know, and I saw your Instagram um, video on that. And I just want to dive in and you tell me, why do you feel that people are not communicating now in relationships with their kids, with their spouse and business? And you are the king of communication. And mm -hmm. I told you I'm the queen of asking. So it's a perfect, I call it marriage. And right. I just want to hear from you. Well, thank you so much for having me. Um, I appreciate what you do. And, and part of communication is asking. And I think you're right on target with that. But, you know, and, and to take that even further, why do people not communicate to these days? Number two, there are two main reasons. Number one, we have made it acceptable not to communicate. So think about it. We communicate with these phones. You know, we text every day. Send, what do we send? An instant message, DM, quick messages. And what happens is we've grown accustomed to communicating faster than ever, but not communicating in depth. So what happens, I can get you a message. I don't necessarily have to get to know you. I get you the message. Hope you perceive it or interpret it the way that I sent it, but good, it's out of the way. I don't have to deal with it anymore. I don't have to deal with any emotions. I don't have to deal with any confrontation. I don't have to deal with anything. So that's one reason we've made it acceptable to communicate that way. But the second reason is we have never been trained, mentored, or coached on, a, on, or coached on how to communicate effectively. Now, we think about it. We grew up, mom didn't, mom was taught, you know what? Children should be seen, not heard. And so mom perpetuates the same thing, okay? And then I adopt that, all right, I don't say anything. And so what happens is, is we have a nation of people who were never taught how to communicate. Either they withdraw hold it in, or the ones that do communicate were taught to communicate aggressively. Here's what I want. I'm going to tell you, that's what it is. And so we have never made it a priority to communicate effectively. And so when somebody tells you something on how to come, and we, and the other, and, and furthermore, we don't invest in learning how to communicate effectively. And we just say, well, I am who I am. Just take me or leave me. You know what? I'm going to just say it. Take it out. You want to take it. <laughs> well, what that does is it creates voids in our life. It distorts our relationships. Um, it severs relationships. And a lot of times, the, and you know this, the best communicators get the best opportunities. 
the best communicators grow exponentially. And so some people are like, you know what? So what? Forget it. I, I, I am who I am. This is this is my lot in life. And uh, but those are the two main reasons why people uh, why communication is is poor these days. Yeah, you know um, how you and I met. Uh, we have a very uh, mutual friend, Real Talk Kim, mm -hmm. who I love dearly. And you were on there, you know, talking about relationships. And you know what? People will blame their deceased parents. They will blame the economy. They will blame their boss. They will blame everyone else except taking responsibility for themselves on how maybe I do have a poor communication problem. Everyone says, I communicate wonderfully. No, your ego thinks you communicate wonderfully, you know, which is edging God out seriously. And even in you know, I wrote the book, The Power of Asking, and asking is a form of gratitude. When you ask, you're allowing somebody to give back. And I teach women on how to communicate, like, you know, how to ask for what they want, how to ask, you know, to be respected or ask for that promotion or ask, you know, asking covers so many different territories. And I want you to touch on that as far as, you know, why people I know in my past, I was afraid to ask because of the answer I might get. Right. I stayed in a relationship for five years. The communication was awful. And I thought the relationship was one way, but it was another way. And of mm -hmm. course, as women, we try to fix it. You know, if we show more love and appreciation that they'll come over on our side, but we cannot change someone who one doesn't want to be changed. And I want to talk about asking asking and communication like you said goes hand in hand whether it's you know with your spouse and you've been married for 22 years yes when i did my homework i mean 22 years and you almost were on the brink of divorce 14 years ago and also communication with business or whatever how important do you feel it is to ask questions because you know people say I've had people say to me, I know you, you're predictable, or, you know, they think they know me, or mm -hmm. even my kids, they're like, oh, what if, you know, they don't ask what I've been doing. Of course, they don't care. They're, you know, right. <laughs> but the whole thing is they, people think that they know you, they mm -hmm. predict you, they assume, and you know what assume means? Sure. And, it's a horrible ground for um, problems. And I really want you to touch on the asking, asking questions, because I know that you have an ebook about asking, you know, questions to your spouse. Right. And, right. You know, please. I, I think because that, that is a big, big deal. People are not asking. Huge. The ebook that I wrote is called Just Ask 50 Questions to Know If He's the One. Now, the reason why asking is critical is, and let me take you back a little bit. I read a book, uh, one of the best books I've ever read. It's right on this bookshelf, Brian. It's called The Seven Powers of Questions by Dorothy Leeds. And in the, in the book, and my dad gave it to me 20 years ago. And my dad was in sales, but he says, but he tells me, he says, son, you must learn to communicate with all types of people. Yes. So, you know, I'm, I'm yes. young at the time. Yes. I don't get it. I mean, but but I heard it. And so I got the book. You know, he gave me the book probably 25 years ago. Let me put 25 years ago. And what I did was I, I read it one day because I started teaching, doing seminars. And I was like, this book is fabulous. And in the book, she talks about asking. And she talks about it from a standpoint of how important asking is because asking does a couple of things. Number one, asking starts the conversation. Yes. Somebody has to start it because you can, and she says, asking, asking questions directs the conversation. It helps you control the conversation. It leads people to persuasion. And she says, it gets people to open up. And I thought about, and I, all of the seven powers of questions are centered around asking. 
And then I was like, wow. And that was, and, 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 and furthermore, you know, she went into, and I thought about it, why are the people who are the most powerful, like, for instance, Oprah, Bob, you know, you know, Barbara Walters and all of the people, because what do they do? They ask the questions. And so asking does a lot of things. There's so much power in it. Um, and I believe, and I also believe that asking questions can uh, restore a relationship. Yes. Because a lot of times I don't know what you're thinking until I ask you, ask you. I don't know what hurt your feelings until I ask you. I don't know what you want from this relationship until I ask you. And so asking and you, by you writing that part of it uh, and, and focusing on the importance of that part of it is amazing. So yes, there is a there are seven powers in asking that, you know what, we can't do without it. Yeah, you know, it's funny. People, um, they think they know someone and they really don't. True. And I want to touch on that. You know, we live in a very instant society where we want it now. We want it easy. We we don't want to work for anything. And I see a lot of people, they start relationships and rather than they try, than trying, they just ghost. Even in, in business, you know, they just yeah. ghost. They give up so easy rather than... Um, you know, trying. And a lot of it, as you know, is fear based and fear is based on what might happen. Mm -hmm. Fear is based on what might happen, but because of their past, because of their last relationship, because of their last marriage, you know, they have this baggage. And I know that you help with that in relationship coaching to where, you know, these people just ghost people, men and women. And I want you to talk about that as well. Because, you know, even myself, you know, I've committed myself for the past year not to be in relationship. I had to heal myself. I spent 35 years afraid of using my voice, mm -hmm. attracting narcissists, just like how my parents were, nothing against them. I mean, I'm not blaming them. They probably just learned what their parents did, you know. Mm -hmm. And I had to take responsibility and I did a lot of personal growth and development to get where I am today. But yeah. I want to touch on that, on why you think that is, you know, that people are just, they don't want to try anymore. They want to give up. And I know that society is teaching us, you know, we want it now and like, we'll go on a date and if it doesn't work, like, whatever. I went um, out with someone one time. I have to tell the story a couple months ago. And, um, you know, I guess I'm a, you know, author and a speaker and, and I was not going to be a booty call. <laughs> and, I know that's right. I know that's right. And uh, I even have on my dating profile that uh, I'm, you know, that is not what I'm looking for. You know, I am not looking for one night scene. What are, I have to share this. And we met for like 30 minutes and he wrote me and he says, uh, you know, I don't think we're a good fit. And I'm thinking all I did was see him drink three vodka and waters. And I'm sitting here thinking, oh, my gosh, I need to heal myself some more because I'm still attracting alcoholics. <laughs> no, I, I'm saying this in a funny sense, but I'm sitting there like and it's because and I was looking at the woman he followed. I wasn't, you know, going to give him a booty call. <laughs> of course not. You know, of course, of course I, I'm saying this. Uh, I mean, I'm laughing because people just the whole point I'm making is that he didn't even try to get to know me and who I am. True. You know, he just, you know, was like ghost done, you know, but at least he told me. But I want to talk about this is, you know, why? I mean, you're the number one relationship coach in the world. Why people are ghosting so much now? And how can you help them? I mean, tell our audience how you can help people better communicate. Because also, you know, people are not going to be like each other. Sure. And But if you don't have the same values and the same moral and the ethics, I'm not sure if I'm saying this right. 
I don't think it's going to work. It's like being equally, you'll like, if you're a Christian and he's an agnostic, it's just not, you know. Right, right, <laughs> right. Well, but let's start it right here, though. I, and, I, and I wrote down a quote that, that one of my ex-coaches gave me. He said, he said, Kenya, life would not be so hard if we didn't expect it to be so easy. And I was like, and I thought about it and I was like, you're right. See, the reason why we have been painted this picture that relationships are easy, that everything is. And so, so consequently, what do we do? We want it quick. We want, we, we have a micro, we're in a microwave society. We want success quickly. You know how hard you've worked to write that book, to get your name out there, to be speaking, to do what you're doing. It was a process. And what some we have convinced people that it's easy. You think about it, look at all the, the people, the so-called money gurus. And you can you can be making a hundred thousand dollars in three months, or I made a million dollars in one month. And, and, and see what happens is, mm. is people grab hold of this. Now, in relationships, people think that relationships are going to be easy, so they don't want to get to know you. They want to say, okay, and they base it on how do I feel? Okay, when I'm with you, ooh, I feel really good. We're, we're a good match. What? Because they base it on those visceral reactions that they have. But those are illusions. Yes, they those are. Those are illusions. And because those illusions evoke, well, what happens is when I feel good, there's a dopamine rush, oxytocin. Uh, and then I've got the serotonin that comes out. And I say, ooh, ooh, ooh. You're so great. Truth is, you don't know me. And we rely on our emotions to tell us who is in alignment with us. Big mistake. And so when I find out, instead of me getting to know you, you know what? If I don't get the rush right away, instead of getting to know you, you know what I'm doing? I'm ghosting. I'm going. I'm out. And we may be a good fit, but we're focused on the feeling the emotions that are released instead of getting to know who you are. So that's why it happens. That's the reason why. And, and unfortunately, it has become a part of our ghosting app. Men and women do it. You know, even my students, when I say, y'all, let's be honest, how many of you have ghosted somebody? Instead of communicating and saying this, I do respect the guy who you went out with who said, you know what? The truth is we're not a match. We're not. Okay, at least he communicated. I didn't waste time. You, I'm not going to be your booty call, but both of it, but you're willing to communicate. And I tell people, when you ghost, I want you to hear me. When you ghost someone, the ghosting part, it is detrimental to your growth. And you might say, why, coach? Because every time you ghost someone, what you do is perpetuate a lack of communication skills. OK, and so what I tell people is when you get ready to, 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 to tell them bye, it's not working, that's a good practice opportunity. So let me show you how to do it. And then they didn't want to do it, but they said, ah, I am getting better at telling people things that are sensitive or difficult. I'm getting better at communication. So I don't let people ghost. I only tell my people, you only ghost if it becomes toxic. If it's a toxic relationship. I'm okay with ghosting because the other person is not operating uh, from a, a place of healthiness. And so if they're not operating from that place, then it's okay to ghost. But other than that, no. We're going to communicate our way out of it. Tell people about, you have developed some software that I think is really, really cool. I, I, yes. I mean, I'm trying to wrap my head around it. Because part of me was, uh, you know, is afraid of AI. In fact, I called my son and I'm like, because he's a the smartest, he's a videographer, video editor for a weave, um, weave and extension company in, in Texas. And they use AI all the time. The biggest problem people have, it's not what you say, but how you say it. Okay. Whether it's online or offline, you know, how to communicate without confrontation. You know, and a lot of people just don't say anything. 
And then when you don't say anything, you sweep it under the rug. And I feel that women do that a lot as far as asking, asking for their needs, asking for what they want. They just sweep it under the rug, rug and expectations breed resentment. And then we put up with it. And then finally, one day we blow up and we just walk out and we were like, why bother? Why try? And you end up hating the person. But you've created some software yes. that helps people communicate, which I want you to explain and also talk about, you know, um, the, you know, things that you have on your website. I was looking through your website. I love you and Real, Real Talk Ken were talking about the card game and all kinds of things. And there's so many things that you have created to help people in relationships. And it's just amazing. I wish I had had you, you know, 30 well, 20 years ago, you know. You wouldn't have wanted me 20 years ago. Not that guy. <laughs> no, as far as a relationship coach. I mean, right. you've been doing coaching for 20 years, so. No, no, I get it. Um, I, okay, so I got to give you this story. I got to give you the back. Please. So th about four years ago, I had this idea because my clients would always come to me and say, Coach, hey, I got I got this, this text. What do, how do I respond? And so I, I wanted to create a service called How Do I Respond? And because when I would tell them what to do, that it would work. They said, God, that worked. So, but then I realized it became too taxing. They were they were hitting me at all times and, and I had to put energy into it. So, and I just put it on the shelf. I thought it was a great idea, but fast forward to when AI came out. Um, so about seven months ago, about eight months ago, I had this epiphany. I'm thinking, I'm like, what if I could use the AI to teach people how to respond? Because I, I kind of still revisit it. And so I hired one developer, told him what I wanted to do. He put something together. It was the worst ever. And I was like, that ain't what I had in mind. And so I found another developer through a friend of mine. Um, and he said, I got this guy. And he loves what you do, and he's interested in hearing your vision. So what I did was I, I we got on and we talked, and I told him, I said, I want to create something where people could type in what they're thinking. So for instance, if you want to tell your sister that I'm mad because you didn't invite me over, or you said this and that, but you want to communicate it, but you don't know how. So I wanted to communicate it, and so we worked on it. And, and then I said, what if you're in a dating relationship or just a, you're in a relationship or just friends and family, but you want to communicate better? So we start working and working and working. And then six months, we had some. We went through iteration after iteration. And now, oh my gosh, it's amazing. So for instance, if you share, want to- Share, share, share. I want to hear it. <laughs> so if you want to tell somebody something, for instance, you want to tell somebody something sensitive, like, for instance, their hygiene isn't the best. What? Okay, I'm just, you know, people, they want to do that. And so I said, okay, so let's, we, we created a category under dating, there are four categories, five categories, under relationship, five categories, and under friends and family, there are four categories. So one of the categories might be sensitive issues, sensitive things. And so you type in, you type in under sensitive. I want to tell the person, I want to tell my boyfriend, you know, his hygiene is great. I wish he would freshen up or brush his teeth. It makes me feel. And so you just pour it in like you're talking to a friend, like you talk. And it spits out something, number one, not aggressive, non-combative, and it gets your point across. Oh, I've got to get that. Oh, my gosh. And then when you and then when you put it out and the responses, people are like, oh my God, this is amazing. Because I kept when I told a developer, it's gotta be communicated like this. He just went, so we went back and forth, and finally AI understood who I was and my voice. And we got it. And so that's what well, it's called the pocket communication coach. So it's like you got a communication coach in your pocket. Oh, wow. That is amazing. I know the other day I was, um, I, I need that because I saw, you know, there's a lot of, I hate to say vomit on Instagram and vomit sure. on 
social sure. media and you look like you're desperate rather than coming from a point of inspiration you look like you're so desperate and I went to a woman and I said could I please make a suggestion and that's you know rather than saying your your Instagram or your posting I'm like may I make a suggestion right that I would suggest um possibly approaching it this way well she ended up blocking me so I'm like I hope that you have I know I know and I thought that I approached it you know correctly because either they're going to take a suggestion or they're not you know um, you need to block a communication code I for know. that I know because I'm going to tell you so many people get offended nowadays mm. I mean offended in business and offended and a lot of people though do I've had a couple of clients um, that I've just taken on this week that say they respect me so much because I don't tell people what they want to hear, but what works and what doesn't. And they would rather have the honesty than to, you know, make so many mistakes with their branding or their wow. marketing or whatever it is. So, yeah, I'm going to sign up today. Tell people how they can get this, because I know that you were telling me on the phone it's only $20 a month. And I, that is nothing for right. the pain and stress that I go through, you know. And to restore relationships and to maintain them. So you go to, it's easy, pocketcommunicationcoach.com. Wow. Say that Pocket. one more time, pocketcommunicationcoach.com. Pocketcommunicationcoach.com. And, and tell me what you're working on. What are you involved in. I saw that you have cards. That looks like a lot of fun for me. Yeah, I, I, I did the cards a few years ago because I wanted to help people ask questions like you. Like you, you're the you're the ask queen. And I wanted the people to ask deeper questions, but so I wanted to gamify it. So I made it fun, but you could ask questions and get to know a person and start looking deeper into their thought process while we're playing this game. Wow. And so that was the reason I created, we sold thousands of them. I created the version. Matter of fact, I have it right here. Let me show it to you. I know. Uh, I was looking at them like, you know. So this is the, this is the sex version. We Ooh. have, um, <laughs> um, I, we have uh, uh, another one, our normal version. I just don't have it over on my, I thought I had it over here. Um, but I keep them, I keep, we sell them every day. So I know. it's called the moment of truth. Uh, our regular edition, and then we have the moment of truth sex edition. Uh, and what what it just does is it allows people to have fun. Um, you gotta and, have fun. And people then, have forgotten how to have fun. Yes, yes, yes. And so if we can have fun, and then we can get to know each other on a deeper level. Why not? You know, it's funny uh, that testimonial that you had that a couple were together for ten years, and she said she's just learning about her husband. And, you know, we think we know our kids. We think we know our spouse. And, you know, people have said to me, oh, I know you. I know you don't know me. It's like, right. were you there? What I went through as a child, you don't know why I am the way I am. That's so I true. have uh, broken those. Um, I have broken those uh, shackles right. through a lot of personal growth and development. And even writing the book, The Power of Asking, um, was very healing for me um, because I grew up with no voice. I was shut down even growing up. You know, I didn't share this with you. I was dyslexic. So when I was in class, I'd raise my hand. I wasn't called on. So what did that tell me? What I have to say uh, isn't important. Is it important. And then growing up in adulthood, how that translated was I wrote I, an author of eight books. Of course, I had an editor. But then I wanted to get on stages and I would compare myself to those people because I was constantly compared all my life to yes. my cousins or whatever. The point I'm getting is this. We really do not know what our spouse or our, or our kids or people have experienced growing up. When we meet someone, and correct me if I'm wrong, we are in the honeymoon stage. We tell people what we want them to know about us and we that's it but then as the relationship progresses and things come up and triggers come up you know sometimes we shut down or we run 
I was really good. Avoidance is fear. I was a runner. I would run. And in fact, a couple of weeks ago, I had a confrontation with my son and I said, I have to leave. And he goes, why are you leaving? You know, I needed to take a breath of fresh air. Right. But a whole, I could have handled it differently. It's all about communication, whether it's your spouse or whatever. And your what you have done has been amazing, you know. And oh, I want you to talk a minute about what I just shared with you is people think they really know someone, but they don't. And like what you said, this really, the card game, allows you to have fun and to get to know someone because I know you have the sexual edition, but you also have the other edition. Right. I have, I have two. Get... I have, yeah. The, the regular yeah. edition. We only, cre we created the sex edition after we created the regular edition because we realized people out here having sex with people and they didn't know. Them. And so I was like, you know, then that brings in a whole new element. So, but, um, but yeah, I think, I think the most important thing is this is we, there are many people that are getting married, getting into relationships, but they don't know the person. And then they stay in it because they're relying on their emotions. But then they stay in it six months, 12 months, and they and they look up and say, or, or even get married. Oops, and, I made a mistake. <laughs> exactly. Oops. Uh, but then there are other things involved. You may have children, you, you know. Um, and so... What I say is, let's learn on the front end. Let's learn. Let's get to know the person on the front end. And so that's, that has been my, my approach to it. That's been my approach. And that's why I created the card game. That's why I got the Just Ask book. All of those things to, are the two to that end. So we can really get to know each other. How can people get coaching from you? Do you have um, a website you can share that how people can, you know, get coaching and, you know, there's no excuses. If you want to change your relationship, you want to change your life mm -hmm. and you're tired of living the way you are, you know, get with Ken. And I mean, you've changed how many people have uh, you've saved marriages. I mean, you have changed so many people's lives. I, I like to think that it's God. I'm just a vessel and it's God's doing. Yes. I get I get to do this work and I thank him every morning in my prayer time. And I believe, you know, the true and living God. I believe I am a Christian I, uh, and I believe that Jesus Christ is the reason that I get to do what I get to do. And, um, you know, at this point, if you are interested, um, you know, there's a Buddhist proverb, for, proverb that says when this student is ready, the teacher will appear. Uh, I, I believe that, too. Um, so you can go to Coach Ken Canyon, uh, C-A-N-I-O-N. That's Coach Ken Canyon dot com. And it all starts with booking a discovery session. I cannot coach anybody I don't know anything about. And so we spend about an hour, hour and a half uh, getting to know who you are. I'm going to ask. I'm going to ask deep questions. So, yeah, so that's how it starts. And then we'll see if we are fit for each other. How did you end up? I have to ask you, you got uh, on MTV, Caught in the Act. How did you yeah. end up on that show? Uh, last year, they have uh, talent agents that go around. And one of their the, uh, the people on their talent t uh, agency it was one of my followers. And oh, said, wow. And so when the show came up, she was like, um, y'all ought to look at this guy. And then I got an email uh, and they wanted to do an interview. Uh, and then they liked what they heard. And then they flew me down to do a chemistry test with, I don't know, I think it was 10 or 11 other people. Uh, and uh, and I, yours truly, did what he did and, and God saw fit to, to, to have me on. So they yeah, picked me so and, cool. you know. You know, there's so much that can happen on social media and how you and I met was through um, a podcast I saw with Real Talk Kim. Right. And then, of course, I asked, I friend requested you, which is an ask. Sure. And I was just like intrigued by everything you did. And I said, I would love to interview you. And of course, you said yes. And people have asked me, you know, how did I get to Walker Hayes and how did I get to Mike Ditkin? You know, the same thing I met 
all these people, believe it or not, on social media, it's all about building relationships. And um, if you don't ask, you know, the Bible, you know, there are Bible verses in the Bible about asking. And it's like we go to God and we ask for things, but the opportunities and the people and the things in our lives, we self-sabotage, we push away. It's kind of like he's sending the helicopter, the, the yes. boat the plane and you say yes. away and you die. And it's like, you know, when we ask God for things, I have, um, you know, and we pray and he brings those things, we destroy them. Mm -hmm. And we even can destroy relationships, you know, <laughs> by saying that's not the right person. We judge before we ask the questions. And I want to, on a last note, why do you feel that there is so much judgment? Like people are just so judgmental nowadays versus getting to know someone, you know, it's, it's just um, that date that I went on. I, I felt judged. Like I was actually grateful. The guy said, I'm not interested, but I was it because I was so harshly judged growing up. It did bring up some things right. like what's wrong with me, you know? And it's not that anything is wrong with me. Um, it's just that we were not the right, you know, chemistry and the right fit. But I want to ask you on a last note, why do you feel that people are so judgmental of each other in marriages and relationships and business relationships um, versus showing love and really getting to know someone? And I know it's all based on what we had said before about time and you know, we're so much into ourselves. And I believe if we had more of an interest in other people than we do ourselves, the world would be more beautiful. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is far easier. And I, I can answer that question simply. It is far easier to identify, locate, and then propagate your flaws as I see them than my own. So it's so in other words, it's easier to judge you than judge me. See, where the difference between me and you or, or and someone else is we look at ourselves. We're self-reflective. And we're going to say, you know, I need to change that, that part of me. I'm not looking at someone else first. I'm looking at me first. Most people who judge, it's far easier. And I can absolve myself of any responsibility if I judge you and not judge me. Wow. That is deep, deep, deep. I am so happy that you, uh, to, you know, agreed to come on, tell other people how they can contact you beside the website. There's Instagram. Yeah. I'm, I'm on, Instagram. on Instagram, TikTok. He's everywhere. Uh, 1.2 million followers. He's everywhere. Yeah, you know, It's just at coach Ken Canyon. I'm, I'm the same thing on all of them. And so, Look, I, I'm out here doing, I'm out here. This is, I often say, this is, this is my ministry. I'm a, I'm a new age minister because I might cuss some. And, I, and I'm, but, I, and I tell people, listen, I'm not trying to be perfect. Jesus was perfect. I'm not. But what I want to be is a man of integrity that God can say of my son, I am, who, I am well pleased. You're amazing. Thank you so much. I mean, Thank you, you, I appreciate you have given you. so many words of wisdom. And, you know, that's the reason I so wanted to interview you as you're like the king of communication with relationships. I'm the queen of asking, but communication, if you don't have that communication, it's like when you build a house, that is when they pour the concrete first, that is the foundation of yes. everything, business, anything is communication. If you put the wood up first and not the concrete, it's going to fall, you know, and That's true. you have the foundation of what people need, especially nowadays. And I hope that we have really, I pray that um, whoever is watching this, you know, it's open your eyes that you heard something that will change your life that, you know, and because, yeah, it's called Disrupt Your Brand, but I'm interviewing people that are making a huge difference in people's lives. And you are definitely impacting the world. And I am so proud of you and your accomplishments. And Thank God you. bless you. I appreciate you. Uh, everything is about, and I am grateful. Gratitude it is. 
Thanks. It's about gratitude. I am grateful that you asked me. I don't turn down any interviews because I told God, God, I am grateful to have this opportunity. And so if I can, I will interview with anyone. I'll talk to anyone, anywhere. And if I can help you in any way, just reach out. Yeah, I appreciate that so much. Thank God you. bless you and have a beautiful day. And I do have some women podcasts that I'm definitely going to refer you to because it is a bunch of women and they need you. They oh, thank you. you so much. Well, I'm here. Okay. God bless. Bye-bye.